Good morning, everybody. Are you glad to be in God's house one more time? We've come here today to worship God in spirit and in truth. No matter what's going on on the outside, no matter what you have heard in the news, just know that God's got it. He got it even before he got here. So let's come on and worship God today, knowing that he is a God that is able to take care of us no matter what is going on. Let us worship and praise God today. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Let us enter into his courts with praise. Let us worship him because truly he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let's worship God today in spirit and in truth. Father, our King, 
our Savior, our provider. Lord, we come before you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity that you have blessed us to be able to enter into another worship service. Lord, we want to worship you on this day in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we invite you into our homes, dear Lord, into our hearts, dear Lord, that you will be glorified. Heavenly Father, we ask right now, Lord, that you just be with each and every one, Lord, who is entering into worship with us. Lord, we ask that you bless those, dear Lord, that are going through different situations in their lives, Lord, and they just need you, Lord, and we ask that you just bless them, Lord, with whatever they stand in the need of. Father, we just ask right now that you bless all those who are homebound right now, Lord. Bless them, Lord, that they will receive a word, dear Lord, from you today. A word, Lord, that will encourage them, dear Lord, to let them know that they need to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in your word. Father, we just ask right now for healing, dear Lord. Healing in the nation right now. Lord, we ask that you would just do what needs to be done in these trying times. Lord, we ask that you just help us to keep the faith. Help us to look to you, dear Lord, for all our help. Because all our help comes from you. Lord, we ask right now that you bless those, dear Lord, that have bereavement right now, Lord. We pray that you continue to be a comforter, dear Lord, for them, Lord. Dear Lord, that we ask that you just take them through this trying time. Lord, we just ask that you just have your way, dear Lord, in each and every one of us. Lord, help us to draw closer to you, Lord. Help us to be the light that we need to be. Help us, Lord, to tell others about you, Lord, so that others will be drawn to you, Lord, that they will want to know the Lord that we serve, that they will want to know, dear Lord, that joy that we have in our heart, that they will want this joy, dear Lord, the peace, dear Lord, that we have. Lord, they will want that peace, Lord. Lord, the strength that we receive from you, Lord, they will want that strength as well. So, Lord, we just thank you right now for another opportunity to worship you on this day. So help us all to worship you in spirit and in truth, that you will be glorified and that your word will go forth. Bless the man of God, Lord, who will preach your word on this day. Use him in a mighty way, Lord. Speak through him, dear Lord, as you always do. We ask all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
the Lord of hosts. If I will not pour you out of blessing, that you will not have room to receive. Y'all, it's given time. And no matter how hard you try, you can't be God-given. Yes, it's giving time. And you have three means by which you can give this morning. You may use the app Givelify. You may fill out an envelope and bring it to the church. Someone will be here to receive it. Or you may mail your offering to Rehoboth Baptist Church, 4646 Hearts Gravel Road, Columbia, South Carolina, 29229. It's giving time. Oh, Lord. Son, that is our Savior and our Lord, to the Spirit of the living God, which comforts us and even guides us on this day, we do give honor and glory. Uh, I want to welcome you not only into this worship experience, but also into the presence of the living God. For when two or three gather, God declares that I am in the midst. To the leadership of this great church, uh, to all the individuals who sow a seed and sacrifice and work that all that you see and all that we do can be done and made possible, to the many servants and saints of the Lord that call themselves Rehoboth, we do give honor for you. 
As always, I do take this time to reverence and recognize my wife, Dr. Martia Thickpin. We do thank you for the many prayers that you lift up on our behalf and know too that we are praying for you. But we've come to that moment in the worship experience that indeed it is preaching time. And wherever you may be and whoever you may be with, I want you to share with them in an exclamatory way that it is preaching time. Tell your neighbor, tell the one to your left and to your right, it's preaching time. There's a word from the Lord. Turn with me, if you would, to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and we'll begin our reading at the sixth verse and we will conclude at the 11th. Again, that is 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 11. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version when you have found the scripture, would you let me know by saying, Amen. The word of our Lord reads in the New Revised Standard Version, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. God's word for God's people. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God, my Redeemer. I want to preach to you this morning from the title, The Mighty Hand of God. Come on, help me preach it this morning. Turn to your neighbor and the person who may be beside you and tell them the mighty hand of God. And if you happen to be viewing this alone, then look up towards heaven and declare, recognize the mighty hand hand of God. As we continue in our value for the month, which is unity, and as we continue to deal with a crisis uh, that is evolving and changing and is affecting the very way we live, the very way we work, and the very way we worship, I do believe that there is an analysis that is needed. To quote a healthcare provider and expert in the field of health and hygiene, In the final analysis, it is the hands. The hands are the connecting piece, says Elizabeth Scott, 
PhD, who directs the Center for Hygiene and Health at Boston Simmons University. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, this doctor declares that it is the hands. Washing hands can save lives. It is the hands. As this pandemic reaches even higher death tolls, we need to look no further than our hands. It has been theorized and hypothesized that our hands are the principal spreaders of this disease and most diseases. That our hands create countless cases of cross-contamination and the spread of this disease is made possible by the use of our hands. For with these hands we touch so many things. In this final analysis, it is, you know what I'm about to say, it is the hand. It is the hand with our opposable thumbs and overly developed thinner pads that distinguish us from the majority of the animal kingdom. It is with our hand that we craft and create, that we tear down and deface, abuse or shape, it is the hand. We even greet each other with the hand shake and we say goodbye with the hand wave. I am yet still challenged to resist the temptation is often presented, for I forget that in this time I need to keep my hands to myself. But some habits are hard to break. How many of us remember the preschool imperative that you need to keep your, your hands to yourself? I visited the corner in kindergarten often because I didn't remember to keep my, come on, thick pen, my hands to myself. Yes, in this final analysis, it is the hand. For it is with our hands that we pray. It is with our hands that we build. It is with our hands that we help. It is with our hands that we unite. A parent holds a small child's hand for security. A lover holds a hand to show affection. Groups hold hands as a sign of oneness. Holding hands itself is a universal signal of solidarity and unity. And if we are to overcome this crisis, it's going to take the unity of our hands. And it is a unity that Peter lifts up in the fifth chapter here. It is unity that is Peter's aim in this chapter of his epistle. A unity that sustains our faith even against the attacks of the enemy. Uh, this fifth chapter found in the book named after Peter. It is much like the closing argument in a heavenly courtroom. For Peter lays out the case for unity in the body of Christ. Unity through humility. Humility of elders. Humility of leaders. Humility of youth. And the humility of all unto God. Famous Christian writer and theologian C.S. Lewis states, true humility is not thinking less of yourself, it is thinking of yourself less. And if ever there was a time that we should think of ourselves less, it is now. If ever there was a time that we should think more often of others, it is now. But not only thinking of others, but more importantly, we all be thinking about God. 
simply saying we need to be given credit where credit is due. For in this final analysis, it is the hand. The hands of so many that have sacrificed. The hands of so many that have done the work and deserve so much credit for all that they have given up and given. The hands of the many healthcare workers. For these hands of humility that have held us together as one nation under God, indivisible, it is the hands of so many. The hands of the doctors and the nurses and the technicians and the staff who with their hands bring the care to ensure the recovery of so many. It is the hands of countless cashiers and grocery shelf stockers who make food readily available by their hands. It is the hand of the many judges and governors and mayors and other officials who thought with their mind but ultimately signed with their hand orders and ordinances to protect the public even from itself. It was the hands of the many friends and family that came and became stop signs as they discouraged others from going into public. Yes, in the final analysis, it was the hand. The many hands that were washed repeatedly to ensure that the fatty envelope and lipid layer of the virus was broken. It was the many hands that were washed repeatedly to remove all foreign agents, seen and unseen. It was the many hands that were washed to ensure that no one else became infected. You see, the work of our hands can even become the divider between us and God. Then we, when we give ourselves too much credit, when it becomes a distraction from God, we saw it in the Tower of Babel. You see, sometimes the work of our hands can even create a false sense of sufficiency or security. We must be careful that the works of our hands don't create an arrogance or ultimately an inability to see the mighty hand of God at work in our lives. As much as we desire to thank and give credit to the work of the hands of others and even ourselves, we must always humble ourselves to recognize the mighty hand of God at work. It's easy to miss the move of God. It's easy to be distracted even by our own efforts. This was evident this week in the New York governor's Como statement reflecting on the state's decrease in positive cases. He stated that God did not do that Faith did not do that. Destiny did not do that. A lot of pain and suffering did that. His failure was a failure that often creeps in our life. It was a failure to acknowledge the mighty hand of God. You see, the mighty hand of God not only was orchestrating the decreases in the number of cases, but it was the mighty hand of God that even allowed this pandemic to happen in the first place. Simply said, and what we must never forget, God is still in control. For with our hands, we have the ability to hurt or to help. With our hand, we can accomplish so much together. But regardless of how much we accomplish with our hand, we cannot miss the mighty hand of God. Because the mighty hand of God can always accomplish so much more than we can ever accomplish on our own. You see, it's not just washing our hand in the final analysis. 
for much more than about washing a hand. It's about watching the hand. Here be people of God, let me say it again. As much as it is about washing a hand, it's much more about watching the hand. Watching the mighty hand of God at work. For many cases, and I would argue in just about all cases, when we thought it was the hand of others working and blessing and helping and doing, upon closer examination, you'll find the fingerprints of God. Yes, fingerprints is that evidence of a hand having been there. Fingerprints are the evidence that a hand has touched, that a hand has worked, that a hand has moved. Fingerprints are the, the, the indisputable, unmistakable evidence that a hand has touched something. And the fact of the matter is that the evidence of the mighty hand of God is all around us. The fingerprints that are the evidence of God has been at work. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Fingerprints of God, as a matter of fact, they've always been over and in our life. If you take the time now just to look back at all that God has brought you through, all that God has allowed you to endure, all that God has kept you through all that God has blessed you with and even protected you from. You look back and you don't have to look hard. You can see the fingerprints and the evidence of a God that is almighty. Hallelujah. For if you take note and look at your life, God has always been leading you. God has always been guiding you. God has always been protecting you. God has even always been correcting you. And even when you didn't first recognize it or couldn't see it or understand it for what it was, it didn't mean that God wasn't there and that God wasn't working. But to every bona fide believer under the sound of my voice, I want you to know and recognize that the mighty hand of God yet still moves. It's no different today, for we must be the witnesses to the world that God's mighty hand is at work. Even, hallelujah, in this crisis, for as much as washing hands ensured the fatty envelope and the lipid layer of the virus was broken, watching the hand. The mighty hand of God has ensured that the many yokes of the world that kept so many under oppression and abuse that God right now is breaking yokes. So in the final analysis, it is the hand. But maybe not the hand that you think. For in the final analysis, it is the hand of the one who created heaven and earth, all things seen and unseen. In the final analysis, it is the hand of the author and the finisher of my faith. In the final analysis, in the end, and even all the way back to the beginning, it is the mighty hand of God that has always made a difference. Therefore, let us not make mistakes. Let us not give too much credit what credit is due, but let us give the final credit and all credit to the one that deserves all our praise, all our worship, all our reverence, all our honor for in everything that we do and everything that we go through, it is the mighty hand of God that has kept us. It is the mighty hand of God that has allowed it is the mighty hand of God that we must place our hopes in. I am thankful for the many hands of unity that have brought us and held us together. I am thankful for the hands of humility that selflessly serve and sacrifice. Uh, but don't mistake that to be just the hands of humans. For always moving behind the scenes 
is the mighty hand of God. Our hope is not in the ability of the doctors or the nurses or the scientists to find vaccines. Our hope is not in the kindness of people, for people grow callous and they will let you down. Our hope rests on nothing less, hallelujah, than Christ's blood and its righteousness. God's mighty hand is at work. And we, as much as washing our hands, in this epidemic. Believers of God, we must wash, watch the hand of God move in our life. For God is doing something. God is moving. Uh, and it's incumbent upon us to see God and the mighty hand of God move. Humble yourself under the hand of God and God will exalt you and establish you. God will restore you, support you, and strengthen you. For when we humble ourselves and honor God as God, we can trust that God will do the rest. I pray that you've been blessed in your hearing. Now let us look to the Lord for prayer and benediction. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do, Lord, even what we don't even realize and recognize you're doing. For so many times you have moved behind the scenes, and even when we can't trace you, God, we can trust that you have intervened, that you have acted, that you have moved on our behalf. Help us, O oh Lord, in all that we do, that we do it with you, in all that we see, that we see you at work. Allow us, O oh Lord, to be the evidence of your glory, the instruments of your hand, that by you and with you and through you, this world might be made better. Lord, never let us forget, even in our effort, that the energy that we use, it comes from you. All that we have, Lord, we give honor and glory unto you. So now, Lord, as we continue to make our way through these days, of uncertainty, these days of unknown end, we trust, O oh Lord, uh, that not only do you know what tomorrow holds, but also that you hold tomorrow. So now, Lord, as we leave uh, this worship experience, may we never leave your presence. May the grace of your God, the love of our Lord and Savior, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may they rest, may they rule, may they abide to make us perfect in every work, henceforth now and forevermore, till we shall gather this way again. Let everyone that love the Lord say, Amen. We want to thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we have some reminders that we definitely want to share with you, uh, principally uh, to our, uh, uh, if you have and desire to be a part of our church family, if you want to join this church, uh, we do open the doors of our church. Uh, you can contact us by mail. Rehoboth Baptist Church, 4646 Hard Scrubble Road. You also can contact us on our website, which is Rehoboth-Baptist.org. Uh, there's a contact page there that you can leave us a brief message with your name and your contact information, and we will contact you. We also want to remind and let you know, if you didn't know, that we have KN95 masks available for all of our seniors, that's our senior citizens, those over the age of 65, all those who are immunosuppressed or compromised, we have masks available for you. And if you know a member that has um, over 65 or immunocompromised, uh, they can contact their deacon uh, to make sure we get those to you. That's our first wave. Our second wave, after we have covered them, is to make sure that we get masks to all of our members. Uh, this week, at some point, we're going to finalize the list to get masks out to all of our members. And then our third wave is our mission wave, where we're going to get masks out to the community. Because uh, we believe that it is one of the ways that not only can we save lives, uh, save souls, but also save lives. Uh, again, we want to practice Operation 1210, which is based on Romans 1210, that every hand you cannot shake needs to be a phone call that you make. We're asking you at 12 noon, 
each day to call and check on your neighbors, your friends, your family, your church members to encourage them. For Romans 12 and 10 says, show one another love, outdo one another in honor and devotion. And by that, we keep the fellowship of this body of believers well and alive. And also with our Operation 1210, we have our Praise and Prayer Line, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. It is our normal prayer line phone number, but through these weeks on Monday, we're going to have Prayer and Praise for the Move of God. Tuesdays, Prayer and Praise for the Testimony of God. Wednesday, uh, for the Walk with God. Thursday, for the Truth of God. And Friday, for the Fear of God, which is reverence. Uh, we want to encourage you to participate. We're asking all ministries and persons of all ages to be on the prayer line, and we're going to continue it until uh, this epidemic and crisis ends. Again, we want to encourage your participation. And last but definitely not least, we want to practice Operation Andrew. Share this, repost it to your page, invite others to tune in with you. We even want you to copy it and send it to others. Uh, for this is our opportunity to practice what Andrew did. For Andrew was always inviting others to Christ, and by it thousands were saved and thousands were fed. We pray that you've been blessed in all that you hear. We want to invite you back next week. Reminder, at 1230, our youth will have their worship experience from 12 to 1 on Zoom. Uh, we want our young people to encourage and invite their friends uh, and tell them to meet them in the breakout rooms as they learn about the Word of God. We also want to encourage you on Wednesdays, both at noon and 7 p.m., we have evening Bible study. We ask that wherever you are, you precede it with prayer. Uh, for the 30 minutes prior is the time that we designate for intercessory prayer, which is prayer for others. But at noon and 12, we have by, via Zoom, uh, uh, and I believe Marco Polo and Facebook, uh, we have our both midday and evening Bible studies. Uh, we pray that you are being safe. We pray that you are being mindful of others. Uh, but even in this time when we are uh, absent uh, and apart from one another, we still can lift up and be unified as a body of believers. Bridge the gap into the Christ.